What's up guys? Today we're going to be replacing the friction pulley on my Mini Cooper S. Alright, so I got the friction pulley here and the water pump pulley here. We're going to be replacing that too. This was 60 bucks, I think, and this was like 25 40 I don't know. I paid $90 for them together. Shit. So I'll go ahead and put links to those in the description. They are not OEM. I'm trying to do this on a budget. OEM, this will run you about $200 in parts, and I can't really afford to do that at the moment. So we're going to go ahead and install those. According to the internet, the first thing that you have to do for this installation, if you're going to be using normal tools, which is what I have, I don't really have any specialty tools, then you have to put the Mini in service mode, which involves removing the front bumper, disconnecting a bunch of stuff, and then pulling this forward to give you a little bit of access around the engine. I'm going to try to do it without doing that first. So what we're going to do is come over to this side. We're going to jack up the car, and we're going to take off this wheel. Uh, bear with me. Jacking up this car is a bit of a process because it's low and there's like no jack points on this car. All right, so we got the front end of the car up on jack stands. I put both sides up just in case we end up having to take the bumper off and things like that. Put this in service mode. We're gonna go ahead and take this wheel off and then the wheel well out of there and see what we can see. Okay, so I'm torn right now. Here's the part that we're replacing. This right here. I already have this pulled out, which by the way, if you do that, if you pull this out, which is really easy to do, it releases tension. So I'm going to show you really quick here. You can see as I pull it out, it releases the tension on that pulley. And then you can just clip it up here and it keeps the tension released. Sorry, it's hard to get my hands in here so I can like move this thing around and show you. But it's loose now. Um, I can't really get my fingers in there to spin the pulley, but if I poke it, it feels like it has a little bit of movement. We have three 10 millimeter bolts holding this in. One, and then two higher up. It's really hard to see. There's one right there, and then one that's hidden. And then there's three bolts holding the pulley on. If I rotate the pulley, which I can do by hand, so that the bolts are about right there, I can just use a regular 10 millimeter wrench to get those off. Um, so I can remove the pulley without dropping the engine down, but I'll have to drop the engine down to get to these bolts. I tried fitting a regular 10 millimeter ratchet with a socket on there. You might be able to fit a quarter inch ratchet with a flex head and a 10 millimeter socket in there to get those out. If you have a serpentine bolt tool, that'll work as well. Or you can put the car in service mode and then drop the engine down a little bit and you'll be able to get to those no problem. So I'm a little bit torn on whether or not I want to put this into service mode. I think I want to get this done as soon as possible, so I might just go to the store and buy a serpentine belt tool, but we'll see. All right, so ignore any noise that comes from this monster right here. Chewy! Anyway, bought this stuff from Harbor Freight, cleaned them out pretty much with all of their low profile tools and they still don't work they still don't fit so i would say like 60 bucks down the drain except i'll probably end up using those eventually someday in the meantime we're gonna have to put this in service mode whatever that means so i'm gonna have to do some googling and follow along with it and see just a little throttle shout out but anyway gonna have to see what we can do to get this thing in service mode and get the engine lowered so we can get those bolts out.
Okay, so apparently this is service mode. All of that does is give you an extra two and a half inches of engine bay. So this is loose now. Really the next step, if you wanna do some like crazy work to the front of your engine, like fixing oil leaks and things like that, what you'd wanna do is take out your headlights, super easy, undo, you can see we undid the intercooler right here. You might have to undo it down there too, but maybe not, maybe not. You would have to take off this and then unbolt the air conditioning condenser, um, but you can pull that out of the way without disconnecting the AC lines, and then you would drain the radiator and disconnect the radiator upper and lower hoses. Chewy. At that point, you could pull off this entire front end, and then you'd have more than enough area to work on the engine. Uh, just to give you an idea, I've never done this service mode thing before, and it took me about an hour. Next time, it probably take me about 30 minutes. Okay, I got Chewy some water. He's not here anymore. He's inside. He's actually right at the door. I can hear him. He wants to come back out, but it's hot out here. So I'm going to leave him in there in the air conditioning. But anyway, next, it doesn't call for this, but I'm supposed to get to this mount right here, and this intercooler piping is in the way, so I'm going to unplug this. And then down here, there's some Torx bit holding it to the front and then just a hose clamp. So I'm just gonna take this hose out and then I should be able to get to that mount a little bit better. Okay, I fought with this thing as hard as I could. Ripped both gloves that I was wearing. This intercooler pipe will not come out. But I did undo that T. 25 I think it was Torx bit and unplugged the math and I'm able to move it out of the way So I have access to this mount So now we can go ahead and drop the engine a little bit so we can get to those stupid bolts All right, we are on the home stretch here. I just have to loosen those and then I can lower the engine I'm going to support it with this piece of wood that I have and We'll be able to access the friction fully I got the engine down now. I can easily access those three bolts that I need to get the friction pulley out. So I'm gonna go ahead and take it out and I'll take the water pump pulley off too. I definitely should have been bagging and tagging those bolts because I, at this point, have no idea where anything goes back. Also, something under this car smells like sewage. I don't know if it's like the wheel wells because they're like fabric or what, but it reeks. But anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and take this friction pulley out. <laughs> All that work and it seems like this is okay. So I'm guessing that it's the tensioner. I'm gonna replace this anyway because this one does have a tiny bit of play in the pulley. Like that doesn't feel super great. Actually, I suppose this could be bad. I'm gonna go ahead and swap it out. I'm gonna swap out the water pump pulley too and put everything back together and we'll see if the sound's gone. What's going on guys? 
I need to do better about making outros to my videos because I go to edit them and they don't have outros. But anyway, that's where I'm gonna stop this video. The noise that was happening from the car is coming from the air conditioning compressor. I figured that out after also replacing the tensioner, which you will see a video on. And I don't think I've noticed it making the noise in a little bit. I think it maybe kind of fixed itself, but if springtime comes around and I'm using the AC and it's making these weird noises, then I'll be replacing the compressor too. So you'll see a video on that. I really wanna get into mods. The next mini video is actually going to be coilovers, new coilovers, max speeding rods, sent me out a set of coilovers for the mini. So if you guys are interested in that video, please make sure that you subscribe, give this video a thumbs up. That would help me a whole lot. And thank you so much for watching. Peace out.